Hello there. I'm back today with a new video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Into this. It's time to show you how to generate photorealistic video with AI. So the method we're going to be using is Blender, which is free. And this is not going to be a tutorial on Blender, so there will be a little bit of basic knowledge required. But we're going to be using Cycles for this. I don't know if you could use EV, but I know I've used Cycles and it works. So we're going to go down into the color management and we're going to be using sRGB. So I've already made a few assets that I like to uh, sprinkle in, populate our scene, trees, rocks, flowers, bushes, things like that. So with Gauguin, it needs to see a certain color to render an asset, a type of object to be used. And these colors are very specific and I've grabbed their hex codes. The hex codes will be in the description. So for these materials, all you need to do is make an emission and set the color to the exact hex code. It's a, an emission so that it basically emits light even though you won't see it because everything in the scene will be emission. What it's really doing is eliminating shadows. We don't want any kind of contouring or shadows because that is in essence a whole different color and Gauguin is not going to know what to do with any of those. It needs pure colors. So this is the way I've figured out to do it. So every time you make a new material, you grab the hex code. The material is going to be just an emission set to that hex code. Once you make a bunch of them, you can save them and then they're ready to go every time you make a new project. So I'm going to create a very simple world today. First, we're going to create a plane and this is going to be our landscape. So I'm going to call this land and then I'm going to size it up pretty big to just give us plenty of room for our world. Now we're going to make a material for it and it seems like I don't already have what I'm looking for so all I'm going to do is open an existing one, copy it so it's new, and this we're going to make mountains. So all you need to do is grab the hex code for the mountain color and put it in our emission color. So now we're going to subdivide this plane by about 50. And that's going to give us plenty of uh, contouring so the mountains look a bit curvy. But this doesn't have to look good at all because Gauguin is going to make it look photorealistic. So we're going to add a displacement modifier so that we can give this some mountain contouring. And the texture we're going to use is clouds. And I'm going to bring the size down so that the mountains are not quite as jagged. Just find a good, something that looks good to you. And bring the strength down to something reasonable. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. Now I'm going to select all the edges and I'm going to size them on the z-axis to zero so that the edge will not stick up. So to do this you're going to hit S Z zero and now all of the edges will be flat and then we'll move them down by pressing G Z and then drag it down. So now we have a nice little model of a mountainous area. Now we're going to create a new mesh. This one's going to be a circle. 
size it up using S and pull it out to how big you want it to be. This is going to be our water. So then hit tab to go into edit and hit F and that will create a face inside of our circle. Now we just go into the material and we're going to find a water material. Uh, and I still, I don't have this one either. So I'm going to copy this material, name it water, and then change the color to the hex code for water. There we go. We've got mountainous islands in the ocean. Now if we put it in cycles view and go into our world tab, we're going to change the surface of the background to an emission and change the color to sky. Now the background will always be sky. Now I'm going to want to add a little bit of variety to the type of landscape we have. So now I'm going to want some trees to appear here on the land. So we're going to use a hair emitter in our particle settings. The hair is going to be trees. So I'm going to bring our number down. We don't need that many trees. And I'm going to render this as a collection and all of my different trees are in that collection. Here's my tree collection. I'm going to turn on advanced settings so that I can make sure that I rotate the trees to face up using the global X. It may not work for you depending on how you made the tree, but just play around with different orientation axes and eventually you'll get them to stand up. Now some of these trees are underwater, so to make sure that the trees are only at the top of the mountains, I'm going to look at it with a side view, select all of the vertices that are toward the top of the mountains, and I'm going to create a new vertex group called trees, and assign it to only those vertices. Now our trees are only going to be above water. In your particle settings, you want to come down to vertex groups and assign density to our trees vertex group. Now our trees will only be above water. It's a little off, but that's okay. Now I want a little more variety on the type of landscape we have. So I'm going to keep mountains towards the top and everything below a certain level I'm going to make it sand so we have sort of sandy beaches and mountain tops. It looks like I already had sand somewhere so here we go. Uh, but you know what to do just copy the hex code for sand and apply that to our emission shader. So now if you assign it to only the vertices, the vertices that you have selected, now we've got sand on just the bottom part. Now I'm going to have a camera. I'm going to lock my camera to view so that I can drag my camera around. And we're going to animate it. If you make your resolution 512 by 512, this is exactly what Gauguin uses as input maps. And if your aspect ratio is one to one, you're gonna see exactly what you're gonna get from Gauguin. So on the first frame, I'm going to hit I so that we can keyframe our location and rotation of the camera, move ahead a bit on the timeline, and I'm gonna drag up to our second view. And I'm gonna I the location and rotation to keyframe that as well. And we're just gonna keep jumping along the timeline keyframing a new location for the camera and then play it back afterwards and see how it feels as far as flying through the scene. For the very end I'm going to fly really close to this tree because it looks pretty cool when you get really close to an object and you see what how Gauguin paints that into a realistic looking object.
I've made this project 540 frames, which at 24 frames per second is going to be 45 seconds. So for my last shot, I'm going to have a zoom out of the whole scene. It should look pretty cool. So now I'll just go back to the beginning, hit play and see how the speed and the feel of the camera movements work. I like it so far, it's pretty good. If anything is too fast or too slow, you can just drag the keyframe forward or back on the timeline. So I'm actually gonna do this at 12 frames per second because I am going to time stretch my final result to 200% and every other frame is going to be filled with a frame interpolator so that it looks less, uh, less flickery. So this is important. In the film tab, you're going to want to change your Gaussian pixel filter. So to explain, I'm going to zoom in here. What happens is called aliasing. So you notice on the edges where two pixels are close together, it's going to blur the line between that to make it look smoother. We don't want that. So change our width of the pixel filter to zero. And now you notice we have crisp lines between different colors. Gauguin needs to see pure colors to know what that object is. And if it blurs the color in between, it's a whole different color and it, you're gonna get weird results. This is how you get around that. Once you've exported all of your frames, you're going to put them in the input folder and we're going to use the terminal to run this Python script. Now I'm not a coder and I don't know how this works, but if I was able to figure out how to get the script to run using Python 3, you can too. I'll have all the instructions in the description and a link to the GitHub for this script. So thanks for checking out my video and I hope you guys have learned how to do this yourself and I'm really excited to see what other people will come up with. You're really only limited by your creativity and I've been able to make objects move, appear, change. So again, thank you for checking out my video and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, oh, oh.